Hello ladies and gents, and welcome to a more detailed breakdown of last week's cutout animation of BB-8, and more details of how I put the final animation together. You can see that tutorial in the card above. For the final animation, I mostly used the same techniques that I demonstrated in the tutorial, but I didn't show me putting it together, so it might not be obvious how I assembled it, and I also added some effects to finish it off. I've had a few questions about these during the week, so I thought I'd put together a quick run through of some of the animation that might not be too obvious, to hopefully answer your questions. So one of the first things you might notice is that the BB-8 droid and the background have been imported as sub-X sheets and that's why they're shown in purple. And this is because the background is made up of multiple layers, as well as BB-8 being made up of multiple layers. And the background is a static background, so it's just frame 1 shown all the way through, although I do apply a blur effect to it as the droid comes nearer the screen. So let's take a quick look at that. So you can see I've added a simple blur effect onto the background here. And if we take a look in the function editor at the blur, and you see as the droid gets to the right hand side, the value is set to zero, and then it increases up to frame 120 as it comes to the front. And it stays at three until it's at the front right, and then increases again to five as the droid comes to the very front of the camera and drops back to 3 as he steps back. And I've linked one of my earlier videos describing the effects in the description below. OK, so if we step into the droid sub -X sheet, you can see I've used the frame by frame animation on the body as the droid rolls to the right hand side to add a secondary level of animation to him. And as he gets to the end of this first run, the head turns to face the opposite direction for the run to the left. You can see I've done this by using the frame by frame technique that I did with the body. So I just change the frame number during the movements. If I take a look inside there, you can see I've got six different head directions facing the front and then moving towards the right hand side. You can also see the key changes from 55 to 58 where the head rotates at the same time. And by having the head rotate on the body at the same time as the head rotates around using the animations, it has a more three-dimensional feel. I tried to make sure both rotations didn't happen at the same time, and this was to avoid twinning, which is the practice of two different pieces of animation moving in time with each other. If they did, it would give a more stilted movement. So you can see that animation changes with the key happen from frames 55 through to 58, but the rotations of the animation frame by frame continue on through to 60. And you can also see how the movement of the droid slows down as it turns around from going to the right to heading towards the left. And I changed this using a combination of the interpolation method for the animation, but also I adjusted the pace on the graph editor. So let's take a quick look at that. So to see the movement of the body on the graph editor, we have to show the values for the body, and it's the east, west and north, south directions. And here you can see the key values for frame 1 and then where they slow down on frame 55 and they speed up again from 55 onwards to move to the left. So as I said earlier, to see the basic interpolation speed, you select in between the keys and at the top right you see I've set the interpolation to speed in and speed out. There are also some other values here that you wouldn't edit by hand, but you edit just using the graph. So in the first slowdown, you select in one of these keys and then press the button at the top right which shows the graph editor. Now depending on one of your settings and the preferences, the editor will either open up in the same area docked to the page or pop up into a new window. I quite like it docked. So let's just expand the rest of these panels. So you can see the two values on the graph drawn out. The first one, if I hover over there, is the east-west, you can see here in the pop-up text. And the second one is the north-south value. Now the droid is moving left to right, so the north and south doesn't change much and the speed doesn't really matter too much. It's the values from left to right that's important. So, by setting the interpolation to speed in and speed out, it means I can get these drag handles. If I select on the point, and you'll see two drag handles. And what you can do, if you click and drag to the left or to the right, you can change how steep the entry is into that frame. So if I put it really close, the animation to frame 55 goes at the same speed right to the end and if I pull it out a long way you get some speed out or ease out from the animation 
so the last part moves quite slowly through the frames. So basically I adjusted both handles to be approximately the same to give the same pace into the turn as you do coming out of it and that gives a much smoother animation. Now using the graph can be quite tricky at first, it takes some getting used to but just to give you a quick run through of it, if you click and drag in either of the axes you can show a larger graph or a smaller graph depending on the animation range in both directions. You can use the middle mouse button to click and drag around to move around the graph. And I use a tablet so I've got one of the buttons on my pen mapped to the middle mouse button as it's used in most of the panels to move around. And you can click on the buttons on the top to move one frame at a time. Or you can move between keys by clicking the left and right arrow keys next to the key at the top there. And at first the running movement seemed very smooth, so I added a peg to add some vertical movement to make BB-8 bobble as he moved over the sand. And it's a very subtle movement, you can see him bobbling up and down as he goes from left to right. And I did that by adding a peg just prior to the body. In the same way as moving the body moves all of the attached children, adding a peg moves its children of the body and the head. And I did this just by pressing the peg button at the bottom here and inserting it in the middle of the graph. So let's take a look at the movement. So I renamed the peg Bobble Peg and it's got a simple north-south movement which I set using the animation tool made sure I was on the correct peg and on position and then in frame 1 I simply moved the character slightly went to frame 2 moved him again and did the same through the first few frames and once I realised that the movement was only about a value of one or a half, I then went in and manually added the first few frames. Finally I just copied them by selecting over them, highlighting them, clicking Ctrl C to copy, then moving my one to the bobble and just pasting it so he bobbled as he moves in that direction. Up to the point where he stops moving, let's set a value of zero, and then when he's ready to start moving, put another zero in, and then pasted the next set of values. And this added another subtle piece to the movement. And finally, I couldn't leave the animation without adding any effects. They're so easy to add, and once you discover how to use them, they're very addictive. And even though it's only a short sample animation, I wanted to add the effects to give that final polish to the animation. And you can see me going through some of the basic effects in the video I've linked down in the description. So, if I go into the effects view, and if I bring him into the middle of the screen where we can see him, and just zoom in, so to quickly run through these, the first effect I used was this matte effect here and that's to get rid of the outside lines and circles from outside of the main area of BB-8. And it just made it easier to draw the character by leaving the circles in and then using effects to remove them for the final version. So basically I've used a matte effect with the body as the source and the matte is this green circle here. So wherever the green circle is for the matte, that's where you see the drawings from the body. And then for both the body and for the head, I've got two duplicate effects. If I turn them on so that you can see them, and the background disappears because it's in the other sub X sheet. So for some reason it doesn't show it here, and I wish it would. So the first one is a body highlight effect. So this is to add the shadow at the bottom right of the body and the bottom right of the head as well. And by adding it using an effect, which means you can adjust it even after you finish drawing all of your drawings. So you can change how strong the effect is or how subtle it is. And the offset here controls the position with the blur controlling the edge of the line. And I used a similar effect at the top left to add a small highlight. And again I just changed the position using the X and Y values and then the colour I use a subtle yellow colour. Just to try and give the effect of the sun which gives an almost backlight effect. Now it's very subtle and you may not have even noticed it during the animation but again, it's just a little something to finish off the animation. And finally, I added a shadow. This is very simply a black circle that I drew, and then I used the animate tool to change its shape to an oval on frame one. And to turn that into a shadow, I just added a blur effect to give it a slight blurred edge, and then used transparency to make the circle partially transparent. And again, you can set the value and adjust these until you get a happy setting. Okay, so that's how I put it together. Why not have a go at Cutout's animation yourself and see what you can come up with? 
and I'll be back next week with more tips for cutouts, so why not subscribe to not miss them? And that's a guarantee. Thank you.